and James Buckley was the main culprit. He would like nothing better than to just like drop a disgusting fart in the car yeah, and it would sort of delay <laughs> filming by about 15 minutes because you'd have to open the windows everything would steam up the rest of the car to go change that's disgusting hello i'm ian morris and i'm one of the creators of the inbetweeners hi i'm damon beasley i'm one of the creators of a new comedy on the bbc called the first team and also a co-creator of the inbetweeners and we're going to be watching some of the clips of both those shows and discussing whether we're proud of ourselves or not yeah, who would you rather fuck? Will's mum or Neil's sister? Oh, good. I leave it out. I think the point of the point of this scene really is uh, is about Neil's idiocy in contemplating incest. Like, obviously, for Neil, there should only be one answer. Bus wankers! Now that actually happened to a friend of mine in a bus stop in Downham in Kent, outside Bromley. So I always enjoy the fact that there's a, some like a car full of kids who've grown who are grown adults now, who must have watched the Inbetweeners and thought, "Oh, we used to do that. That's weird, isn't it? How did that become a thing on there?" Was, I'm sure it could have been only them. It was a friend of mine, a very funny man called John Creasy. He told me about that, and he said he was standing at the bus stop, um, and they drove by. They slowed down to drive by. There were only three people there, and he was one of them, and called them bus wankers. Ian, did was... you have a? I had a yellow Mini Metro. Did you have a yellow car as well? No, I didn't. I had a brown car. I had a poo brown Triumph Herald. Oh, no. Dad, really? Really? It might not look much. It's a great little runner. Yeah, there's Richard Drew and the car guys. They found it. It was about 500 quid, wasn't it? 400 quid, I think. I think it was the thing where we were renting it to begin with. And they're like, it might be cheaper just to buy it. If you think, if you, think you might get a second series, it's probably worth buying it. The four guys loved, loved being in that car because we couldn't get them. We couldn't get them. We had to sort of just go over the radio. If they wanted, they could just turn the radios off and they just chat to each other. And it was even worse on the second film in Australia because they would just take the, take the mickey unbelie- like, relentlessly. And it was just, they loved it. They loved it. The four of them in that car together, that was their, they were their best days. And also they'd be in there and obviously the windows have to be wound up because of the sound, your recording sound. Yeah. and. The heaters have to be on full blast so it doesn't steam up. And James Buckley was the main culprit. He would like nothing better than to just, like, drop a disgusting fart in the car. Yeah, McDonald's fart. In and it would sort of delay <laughs> filming by about 15 minutes because you'd have to open the windows, everything would steam up, the rest of the car to go, James, that's disgusting. And he would just think, like, for us, it was the most frustrating thing in the world. And he'd just sit there thinking it's the funniest thing he's ever it's done. Funny, to be yeah, fair to him, it was pretty funny. What's a dirty bomb? Well, it's just a big nuclear bomb that terrorists would use to kill everyone in London. Little Dio there. Dio? He was a he was a great it? little actor, wasn't he, and fun to work with, yeah. considering we had to cover him in sick quite a lot. He's 40 now. I really like this. I watched this scene back when you sent me the clips. I think I, I enjoyed that bit with the uh, threads. Is it threads, that video? Yeah, it's the idea. Threads or something, isn't it? Crash Zoom. Yeah. And then Joe's going to quite good now that very is a successful sick rig. yeah down the side of his face I'd i remember can't... doing this at a girl's house that i had a huge crush on. i say secret crush but it's fairly obvious to be fair, honest and uh, i went around there drunk to sort of propose and i ended up throwing up in a sink and picking it out with my fingers i remember that was grim i think maybe i ate something trick is no cut here for the puke here it comes have you got any it's just like there you go. <laughs> How many times did Dio get puked on? About 20, because it wasn't work, he was going over his shoulder. <laughs> oh dear. I I love, oh dear, that. oh dear, maybe not. I think that was your no uh, idea, Ian Morris. That was a very funny end point to that. Oh dear. That idea. Doesn't sound like me. I, that reminded me, the idea though then did remind me of the uh, film when he goes, oh, I think I've shit myself. <laughs> I know, yeah. The hardest I've ever laughed on set. In my, <laughs> I was literally in a little black box on the beach in Magaluf, like weeping laughing. A Joe going, oh, I think I've shit myself. Just after she kissed him. Oh, I think I've shit myself. Oh, friend, football friend. Oh, best friends forever and ever. What I love about the friend thing is like making a friend, that's a good thing. Like that can only, surely, that's only a good thing is making a friend. Jack, and Jason, Jack, Buckley does such a lovely little smile when he turns around to the guy and he's like, oh, friend, yeah, cheers, mate. You know, he's just happy. And look, turns in a second. I laugh. You know when you laugh and stuff, and you think, I don't know where that joke came from, but it just made me laugh. I think it's Joe's performance. But West, from, he goes, oh, he's from, from football, from West Ham Charles. It never happened. It's a brilliant <laughs> performance from Joe. Fucking friend. Oh, friend. 
friend! Friend! Fucking football friend! James Buckley puked in a bush after jumping, jumping up and down, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did, didn't he? It was, it was uh, genuinely like that was the most exercise he'd done <laughs> in about three years and he was he vomited. Again, just winding your friends up over things that are even considered, you know, only a good thing, being friends with someone, yeah. making new friend, and winding your friends up. You, the, the truth about close friendships is that nothing is off the table and everything can be used to get at you. I think that's the kind of point we were making with friend, really. It was a hard pitch when we went to the uh, script meetings at Channel yeah, 4 yeah. when they said, but we don't really get it. I mean, what, he makes a friend and then... <laughs> They, they say they he say makes a friend, and then they, 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 what, they just sort of, by saying friend, they drive him to the point where he <laughs> vandalises his friend's car. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, that's like, that's classic 16-year-old <laughs> boy in loop of behaviour, yeah. I mean, that was what we enjoyed about it. And I think, I, I think they got it pretty quickly, actually, to be fair to them. I think once we explained what, you know, what yeah. our drive for doing that was. But, um, yeah, it's not a classic. It's not a classic in a script meeting to have someone go, yeah, that's, that'll make sense. That's great. So they, he's made a friend. That's a good thing. Yeah. They, say, they say you've made a friend a lot, and then he vandalises his friend's car because they say that. <laughs> like, yep, that's it. And it, genuinely, all of that, I mean, almost verbatim, actually happened to <laughs> <laughs> somebody who moved into the small village where I lived and had the audacity to make friends with the wrong kid in our gang. He was... Uh, he was humiliated by the rest of us for having a friend. So, yeah, I, I've always, I mean, we didn't, I tell you what, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because that was not one that we expected to sort of go viral where before go viral no. was ever a term, friend. So no. it's had a bit of staying power, that. It's good. I, I, saw, I mean, I still love that, that Jamie Vardy clip of him when it's, they're in the tunnel. I think it must be, they're playing Leicester playing Southampton or something. Is it Gorks or someone comes from Southampton team to say hello to Casper Schmeichel and you can just see in the background <laughs> Jamie Vardy <laughs> Oh, Denmark friend. Oh, friend. <laughs> That's funny. It's like, yep, yeah, can't do it. Can't make, can't make a friend outside your group. I've got to say, when I heard there was an American international available, I jumped at the chance. This is a clip from the very first episode of the first team. Oh, I don't play for the U.S. national team. U.S. men's team. You play for the U.S. men's team. No, I, I haven't been selected yet. So I just signed an American who's not even an international. Why did you decide to write a show about a football team and where did it come from? Um, I, when we were doing the Inbetweeners, I flew to America to see my wife, then girlfriend, and I sat next to a professional footballer on the plane and we chatted for the whole 11 and a half hour journey and he was fascinating. And I, there were lots of things I didn't know about football and things I didn't know that they train maybe an hour, an hour and a half a day. And they have a lot of time lands. And they're also, they're not allowed to do more training at home in case they get injured. So it's, so it's kind of like the thing that you've always done in your life. You're kind of this weird, you know, and you're well paid for it, but you're kind of in a strange gilded cage. And I think that was, that was an interesting idea, was a work environment where your bosses are very much on top of you, but also you're being judged for what you do. So came back, talked to Damon about it, and we were like, yeah, we should definitely do that. And here we are 12 years later. I can't imagine doing this all the time. Which is why we're going to buy you enough toilet paper to last until you're 30, by which time I assume you'll be married. Hope so. Well, this guy, so this is, this is Jake Short, Shaquille Ali Yabua, and Jack McMullen, who are playing Jack, Benji, and Matty. Anyway, they were they're the three new actors, new stars of the first team. I think they're very funny together. Yeah. I really love that scene. And um, what, it goes on to, they get accosted in yeah. the shop. And it's basically, we wanted to show the sort of, Entitled. One of the downsides to that level of fame or being a you know professional athlete, you are you are in many senses public property and uh, going even a simple trip to the supermarket or to the cash and carry is laced with um, danger for them. So you know at any point they could be sort of uh, accosted by a member of the public to have a go, which is what happens to to Jack. We're huge football fans. I think that's the most important thing to say. Is uh, I support Arsenal. Ian likes QPR. And um, we <laughs> we want it obviously like anyone you you know if you get the opportunity to follow your dreams and hang out with your heroes you're going to try and do that so we that was one of the reasons we wanted to get into it but uh, partly the research of this we wanted to render the world in as authentic a way as we could I think when we did the in between us we knew six to form common rooms you know intimately because you know we're so we weren't yeah, that far from being yeah, teenagers so, really yeah. in Serbia but we didn't know football in the same way so. We got it was a perfect opportunity to you know peek behind the curtain and we did lots and lots of uh, 
research and met people who are very generous with their time with players and professionals associated with the club, medics and kit men and uh, press department, chairman of football clubs. So we were really, really lucky to, you know, to, to be able to spend a lot, a lot of our time just touring something we love.